Okay, and in this video, we are going to talk about uh, functions within OpenAI Assistant. Uh, so this is, is the second in the series talking about the OpenAI Assistant API and how we can leverage it. Uh, so if you haven't already done so, there's, uh, please go back and watch the first video, which will cover a lot of the basics um, that we're going to kind of gloss over. I'm not going to really spend a lot of time on that in the interest of time. I'll definitely go back and watch that first video. In this video, we're going to talk specifically about uh, how we can execute our own code uh, in addition to having the large language model uh, do some of the work for us. Okay, uh, so this is the same image or depiction that I had in the first video, I've added a few additional steps here because essentially we're going to be talking about functions and how they play into everything else we've been talking about. So just real quick, uh, we have the, our, our assistant and it has our instructions and then it's going to use one of the GPT models that's available. It can also access any files that we've uploaded and any tools that are available. And in addition to the, the baked in tools such as retrieval, which we use to get to our files or uh, the code interpreter, we can have our own functions as well. And what they are is triggers or at least notifications to OpenAI that, hey, this is something that we need to go back and reach out and, and get the answer outside of uh, the large language model itself. And meaning it's gonna come back to us. It's gonna ask us to solve this problem, whatever it happens to be. Uh, so again, this is a way to hook in our own logic at various points. We let the engine do the heavy lifting in terms of deciding how to attack a problem to answer it. And then when it sees certain points that it needs to reach out and doesn't know the answer, it's going to look for whatever tools are available to it. And it's then going to call that tool. And that's in our essence what, what functions happen to be. Uh, so what happens is that all of this data gets pulled into uh, the run of the actual assistant when we want to execute it. And then we pull on our, our messages, which are part of the thread. So threads are a conversation. Our messages go into the threads. And then eventually uh, we get back an answer from the, from the AI uh, service itself once we have an answer. Uh, so when everything is done, we get a completed message and the message comes back into our threads, which we can then retrieve uh, out. We can actually pull that out of our threads. So think of threads as a conversation. Messages are just as simply the conversation messages uh, that are ongoing. When this is running, at points where it thinks that it needs to um, use one of our functions that we've defined, and we'll show you how to define that, it's then going to stop and make a signal that says, hey, something requires action. And it's gonna give us the information about which function it needs to be call needs to call in order to resolve whatever action that it th thinks is needed. So it's going to call us and tell us, "Hey, this is, this requires action." We can then use our custom code, whatever it happens to be. We can do it internally. Or we can reach out to a, a RESTful service. We can do anything that you can think of uh, to essentially fulfill whatever it is that that action is looking for. Then once we're done, we just send a notification back to, to the Assistant API, and then it, cont it continues on its merry way until eventually everything is ready to go, and it has its answer, and it sends it back uh, with the completed message with uh, whatever it is that the, that the end result um, was, was necessary for uh, this particular Assistant to get, to get done, okay? So that's how it works. Let's walk through a little bit how uh, we're going to put this together. All right, so I have my Colab notebook here. And just like before, we are going to uh, set things up. We are going to uh, install our OpenAI uh, package along with any dependencies and import a few of the libraries that are necessary. Most, most importantly is the OpenAI client. Okay, again, you will need your API keys, so you will definitely need to do that. Now I've done some of this already and I've already, in the interest of time, I've already executed some of these. Uh, but essentially you need to have your API key. We talked about how to retrieve that in the first video. And then we're going to instantiate or create an OpenAI client, all right? And that's where all of the interaction to our individual assistants is gonna go through, okay? All right, just like before, we go ahead and upload our knowledge base file. Um, I've already done that here, I already have it, and um, I'll go ahead and um, 
run it and add it into our list of files. All right, so it's going to essentially upload that file into the assistant list. All right, and if I want to, I can go ahead and click on this and go into OpenAI. And sure enough, there is my TV manual. Again, we're using that same, same model that we were talking about. We're going to use this TV manual, and we're going to ask questions about that TV manual. All right, so there you go. There's our assistant we just created. All right, so the file is there. We are then going to uh, take that file. And uh, first off, we can just retrieve it. All right, we have our files there. Let's go ahead and get the file ID. Uh, so here's where we're going to, now here's where we're gonna to start to deviate a little bit from what we did in the first video. When you create your assistant you, assistant, you can create and define which types of tools you want that assistant to use. So first off, we want the retrie retrieval, and this is exactly what we did before. So we are going to be using the retrieval tool to allow us to talk to our our manual that we our TV manual just like we did before but here we're also going to add in our custom function all right now I'm gonna walk you through what this means uh, so essentially this is a structure an object that essentially has a lot of metadata about what's going on all right so here this functions purpose is going to be is going to simulate sending an email okay based on some information so when you create your function you need to provide it some of these details. For, for example, you need to give it the name that you want to call this function. Uh, we're going to call our send email. We also have to give it a description of what the purpose is of this email so that the so that OpenAI knows when to call it. Okay, so we're here we're saying it's going to be a function and we tell it what types of data is going to be coming in, an email address and subject line and body. And it's going to send an email to an email address that's been specified. All right, so that's the purpose: is to send an email with a certain subject line and body to an email address. All right, so essentially, it's going to package all that up and send that to us. As part of this function, you also define what are the parameters that are necessary. These are parameters that the OpenAI assistant is going to send into our uh, back to us, right? So this essentially is sending the data that it retrieved to us to fulfill whatever it is that the function needs to do. So we're going to get the email address, we're going to get the subject and the text body, right? And then it's going to be up to us to then take that information and do whatever it is to fulfill that particular uh, function, okay? Uh, when, you, when you define your properties, you give it, uh, obviously you give it a, a name of what you want the property to be called, a data type of a string, mostly st I mean, string is kind of what we're using here, but obviously there's different data types, and then a description of what this particular property is. So you provide that for each one of the properties. You also then tell it which of these properties are required. So in our case, email, subject, and text body are all required. So when this function is signaled back to us, it's gonna have all that data all the time. So it's all required data it won't be missing any of those pieces. Now, once we have our function defined, and again, this is really nothing more than just a, an object, we are then going to take our tools that we have above, and we're gonna append onto it a new one called function. So it's a type function, and the function name, or the function details is gonna be specified as one of the properties here. All right, so essentially we should, when I run this, we'll see now that I have two tools. I've got my retrieval tool, and then I've got this metadata that corresponds to uh, what happens when someone, when, when the tool needs to send an email. All right, now that I have that, I'm going to then do the same thing I did before, which is grant access to the files, and then also I'm going to give it my list of tools that I want this assistant to use. So essentially create the assistant, and then here I've got my description here of what the assistant's gonna do. It's a chatbot designed to respond to email inquiries about Vizio uh, V-series televisions models, same models as before that we did, right? And it's going to have our collection of tools. So it's gonna know how to answer questions and then formulate an email uh, about the answer, that includes the answer to whatever those questions happen to be, right? So there's my assistant. I can go back over here into my list of assistants, and there it is. There's my customer support assistant. It's got all the details here. It also has my uh, function. There's my function definition. All right, all the details for that function definition are there. 
So it knows how to, it knows whenever an email it needs to be sent, how to do that. So it's not something it knows inherently how to do. It calls back to our code to fulfill that request. That's the purpose of our functions is really custom code. All right. Same as before, I can obviously update that if I want to. Um, now what I'm going to do here is um, I'll just retrieve it just so we can see that it's there. There's our there's our list of assistants. All right, same as before, we create our thread exactly the same way. All right, so there's our thread. We're then going to add our user message to the thread. All right, so the message we're going to be adding this time is respond to John at email address. Here's just a dummy email address who is asking the following question. What is the viewable area of the V585M K01 model video TV and what is its power consumption? So it's going to ask for that information and the tool is then going to have to go through whatever steps it's necessary to answer that question. Number one, it's got to retrieve our data from our document. Then it's got to figure out the email address and determine a message body and a message text or title and message text to go with it. And it's going to do all that for us. All right, so let's go ahead and run it, add that message in. All right, so that message is now part of our threads. So right now we've got our message sitting down here in our thread, and now we have to then package everything up and send it to, to the assistant run service so that it can pull all the pieces together to fulfill this request. I'm jump back over here. All right, let's go ahead and run it. All right, and we'll see that it's, there it is. Now, just as before, I can check the run status and we can kind of see that it's in progress. OK, that's typical. So as before, we can have a, a, a loop that we can run through. And I'm going to go ahead and start that loop as I talk about this. You'll see that it says in progress. Now, I've added a third option here, which is requires action. That's the new piece that we didn't talk about in the first video. This is the signal to our code that it needs more information. This is the signal that there's actually a function that needs to be called, where it's the, the model is now telling us, hey, I'm not ready to complete this request yet. I need something more. So that's what the purpose of requires action. Essentially, that's going to be our signal to then go off and call our custom code or our function, wait for a response, and then send it back into the run model and then it, then it has that additional information so it can then continue on and fulfill whatever it is that the function's purpose, the assistant's purpose happens to be. All right, all right, uh, so it requires action. So it's waiting here. So now what we're gonna do here is we're going to do a couple things. We have to determine if we got um, what we have here. So if, if the requires action was what we received, we then need to query the tools that are being requested. So when you have a required action, you can look at the tools output and tool calls to see exactly what it is that the AI model needs us to do. Uh, so if I print this out, you'll see that if I just, just simply took this information, just printed out the tools to call, because it can call many, you might get more than one. So I'm simply looking at the very first tool that came back. And here it is. So it's it's asking us to send an email and here are our three parameters. Uh, so it figured out the email address based on what I had sent it. It figured out a subject line for it. And then the text body is there it is. Dear John there. Thank you for reaching out with your query about the series model TV. It has our viewable area, which is correct. And it also has the power consumption all at the back here. So there is the full email. All right. So now it's asking, it's kind of waiting for us to do our job, which is to then take this data and figure out how to send an email. Now we don't really have any email hooked up to this, so we'll just simulate what would normally happen. What you're gonna do is you're gonna go through this tools and you're going to iterate through them and determine based on what the function name is, what to do. So this would be an if statement that, or however stru whatever structure you wanted to use to, to break these up into separate ones because you can have more than one tool in your in obviously in your code. So in this case, I'm looking for the function name to match send email. I'm simply just going to return back uh, true. So we want to tell the AI model when we're done that we have uh, we, any any output that we need to send back, we provide to it through this tools output array. So the tools output array gives us the call ID. 
uh, tool call ID. Again, that's the unique call ID for it. And then whatever output we decide to send back. Uh, so essentially, we're at this point, we would be telling it, hey, we did, we sent, um, we, we then fulfilled this request of sending an email. Uh, here is all the details about what just happened. Here's the, the, here's the response of true, that it's good. We can then send the run request, the submit tools output. So this is how you send back information to the run service to know what thread is being, what thread we're working on. Here's the run ID that goes with the current run. And then here's all the output of what was fulfilled. All right, so now we have essentially told the AI model that we went off and sent the email and it can go on and continue on with whatever is left to be done. All right, now I can check the run status again. And you should see here that now that run status should be set as complete. We'll let that run, there it is. And now that I've got it complete, I can go in, reach in, get my messages out of the threads and iterate through them. And sure enough that here is my request of what I asked it to do. And then what it's gonna give me back is the email to John with the information about the viewable area and power consumption of the Visio V series, blah, 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 was sent successfully. So there you have it. So this is how you hook in your own logic. And again, just to point out a couple things here, this doesn't have any of the details about what was sent in the email. It simply did what it was asked to do. It simply went ahead and sent the email and then just let us know that it was done it, it, all we did all along the way is is do the work of actually sending out the email and sending back that notification uh, that we we completed whatever task that that function was asked to do. All right. So again, you can take this as far as you want. Again, you can have multiple different types of tools uh, that you've added in or functions, as you say, that you've added in there, and uh, it's really up to the engine. The, the large language model to then do the work of deciding which tools to call when, right? So you might have four or five, 10 different types of tools that you have uh, set up and you let the engine do what it's good at. And that is figuring out how to solve a problem and then calling out to the various functions or tools when it needs to in the order that it thinks it needs to, okay? And there you have it. So hopefully you found this useful. Uh, I'm gonna continue on with this series with additional videos here shortly. Uh, so again, hopefully you found this valuable. If you did, please like and subscribe. And if you have additional questions or comments or suggestions for future videos, please uh, share them with me in the comments. I'll be happy to uh, entertain those. Okay, thanks for listening. Take care.